Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and I'm back here with another hand history review for you guys. Today's hand was sent to me by Carol. I'm always happy to get hands from my female viewers. I don't have many of them. <laughs> my, my, I think the stats say my audience is like at least 95% male, so awesome. Thank you for sending me this hand, Carol. Let's jump right into it. So Carol's playing, uh, this hand was played on Poker Stars 6 Max, and she has Ace Queen of Clubs, you guys can see there in the cutoff. Oh, and I should mention, uh, she didn't really give me any reads of any of the players in this hand, so we're just gonna assume everyone's basically kind of an unknown, kind of like you're playing Zoom Poker, as you guys know, it's difficult to get reads, so... Uh, we'll just keep that in mind as we're moving through. So we've already got a bit of a stack size tell with Villain 4 because they are roughly 30 cents shy of a full stack. This is a very, very typical uh, online poker tell of a recreational player. Now again, every time I say something these days, somebody goes crazy in the comments. Uh, yes, there are some good players also that will sometimes not use auto top up and uh this could be a good good player also i am making a generalization just want to make that totally totally clear because somebody's gonna go crazy in the comments um <laughs> in my experience playing millions of hands at these stakes somebody who's not using the auto top up feature who has a below 100 big blind stack size typically nine out, at least nine out of ten times they're a recreational poker player uh, limping also obviously huge huge sign of a recreational poker player I don't want to go too deeply into that in this video I know some of you guys uh, do like to limp and stuff in live games and stuff specifically but specifically online poker limping these days again nine out of ten times recreational poker player so Carol does the right thing here and raises it up and I love the bed sizing Carol right on get it get it right up there I, I love that at all too that's perfect because once again they'll call anything guys uh, if you guys have read my first book crushing the micro stakes i know i always talk about that but that's what i talk about i spend the whole book just talking about how to make these bad players pay the price so um there you go there's a call who knows what they can have um wow pretty good flop pretty good flop obviously now villain four comes to the check so what should carol do in a spot like this well as you guys know, uh, another thing I'm always harping on is never, ever slow play at the micros. However, this is going to be the one exception. When you flop a full house or better, um, yes, you should definitely um, slow play pretty much all the time at the micros because you just have the board so unbelievably crushed. There's, I mean, it's so difficult for them to have anything on this board because you've got it all. So... Um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna agree with uh, Carol's decision to check behind here. I think it's definitely the right play. So go to a turn. Um, it's you know I mean there's no way basically for us to be beat uh, unless he has aces somehow. Um, the flush comes in that that could be good. Maybe at that somehow. Um, anyways, um, what does he do? He checks. And what does Carol decide to do? She decides to go for the old teaser bet of one-fifth pot. Is that one-fifth? Something like that. Six cents into uh, 31. Um, I think that's fine. Uh, I would typically like to put something in the middle by the turn here. Uh, I'd probably go a little bit bigger. Maybe half pot, something like that. I think with half pot, you're still going to get all those hands that maybe have one diamond. I, definitely a hand that has the king of diamonds. Um, is going to come along to a half pot bet, I think, as well. I definitely would not make it more than half pot, but I, I see the thinking with the six cents, just try to get anything to come along, so it's it's okay as well. Um, Villain four decides to call. We go to a river with the eight of diamonds. So that's actually a really good river for us. I don't think there's any, there's no straight flush possibilities, thank God. Um, <laughs> But that's actually a really good river for us because there's a decent chance he's got a diamond in his hand, so that means he'll pay off another bet. So let's see how the action plays out here. And he actually, <laughs> Villain 4, actually comes in for the slight over bet, which uh, is pretty hilarious. So um, I, I don't think there's a whole lot else to say with this hand, guys. You already know what to do, which is what Carol does. Obviously, we're raising with the second nuts, essentially the Stone Cold Nuts. And Villain 4 pays it off and with just the jack high um, flush. So, um, not the most uh, educational hand on earth, but I thought Carol played it well. And I think there still are some points that I hope you guys will take from this hand. And it's just 
Look at Carol's bet sizing. This is what you, I mean, look at what they call with. You know, Jack Nine, they're going to call the 14 cents preflop. So why do I still see people these days making it, you know, uh, making a mini raise or a, or a six cents raise or something? Just jack it up, guys. I mean, it's like in the last video that uh, if you guys watched the last video last week is these guys are going to call. I've been preaching this stuff for years. The micros guys just absolutely get, I love the bet size and preflop. And after the flop, absolutely, it's one of the rare scenarios where you just flop the world, and you definitely should be slow playing it like Carol did. The turn is a little bit debatable in my opinion. I would probably bet a little bit more, maybe half pot or so, but getting something in there is good. And then, you know, as you can see, the player that we, um, you know, we looked at the limp and the stack size tell at the beginning, and we assumed as a recreational player, I think you guys can see the results. I have no idea why this guy's overbetting the pot with a jack high flush on the river and calling it all off. Maybe he thinks he's got a straight flush. I don't know. All kidding aside, uh, let me know your thoughts in the hand below. Um, how would have you? How do you play the Stone Cold Nuts? If you guys enjoy watching Micro Stakes hand history reviews like this, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channels. I'm putting out new ones all the time. And I gotta say, guys, um, I honestly I can't take too many more hand histories right now because I just have way too many. I don't want to like. I've got so many right now, I could make videos until 2020 and I'd still be making these videos. People still send me their hand histories and, and I appreciate it, but I, I just, I gotta let you know, it might be a super long wait. It's probably, you're not gonna see your, your hand on YouTube until 2020 at this point. I'm recording this right now in February of 2019. So, but I appreciate all you guys sending me these hands so much. And I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. You know, um, I love ta um, hearing your comments as well. You guys tell me how you would have played these hands and where you think I'm wrong, where you think I'm right in my analysis. I even love the trolls. I mean, they're awesome too. So it's all good. Um, anyways, uh, lastly, lastly, make sure you download a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. It's called Massive Profit at the Micros. It's the top link in the description below. I'll give you my complete strategy on how I crush the micro stakes. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. This has been Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com.